Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Ah, It's Just Cryptocurrency Things. So first, Arbitrum DAO vote spirals into disaster. DAO rejects $1 billion spending proposal, but Arbitrum already started spending. So if you don't know what any of these words mean, I'll try and clear it up a little bit. DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization, which essentially in the Web3 world of cryptocurrency and blockchain means that we all vote on things that are going to happen and we all have a say and we use our tokens to basically vote in a democratic, I own more stuff than you fashion, which is just amazing. Now, of course, if you put something to a vote saying we're going to spend one billion dollars doing something and everyone says no i don't think we will actually and you just do it anyway but not only do you do it anyway but you were already doing it before actually putting the vote forward that's not a vote and obviously it raises the question what is the use of a dao why are we voting on anything if you're just going to fucking do things anyway now of course they're saying we're totally mistaken here but i'll read you the web3 is is going great article after a bumpy start to the airdrop, which you'll see here, uh, I know about this because somebody told me about it yesterday, funnily enough, it's crazy how things like that work. Essentially, an airdrop, if you don't know, is just, oh, you participated in this thing. We're going to do a snapshot at some point of our blockchain or whatever, and then people who meet this certain threshold are going to get given, you know, airdropped into their wallets, some tokens, maybe NFTs, whatever it's going to be. Essentially, it's we're giving you free stuff for participating in our you know thing a token airdrop from popular arbitrum ethereum l2 illustrated many of the challenges with airdrops where tokens are automatically distributed to a group of crypto wallets in this case based on how much they had used the platform now of course use the platform uh, is a is a fairly interesting way of framing this because essentially what people were doing to use the platform was gaming the system by just making transactions between multiple wallets and then it looked like they were actually using it. But obviously they weren't using it. They were just farming, you know, goodwill brownie points, paying transaction fees to not engage with it in any kind of way that a normal person would consider being uh, a, a use case for the thing. The tokens will ultimately be used for community voting on protocol change. Oh, this aged so well. It aged so well but also have value on the secondary market, because of course it will. Users were eager to snap them up, particularly as users speculated that the price could reach $10 per token, as yet it is not remaining around $1.38. Let's have a look at how much it's reached now. What are you at now? $1.20. Mm, not really at that $10 mark, is it? Not really moved. It's Oh my god, it launched and people were paying $11. Imagine, imagine. It comes out and you're the first motherfucker in line. Oh, let me have it for $11, daddy. And then it goes down to a dollar. Please stop doing this. However, the airdrop had a bumpy start with scammers latching onto the event to proliferate fake airdrop websites. Love it. Decentralization. Fantastic. Fishers reportedly scammed more than 10,000 people using these schemes. At one point, Twitter even suspended the real Arbitrum Twitter account after mistaking it for one of the many phishing accounts. This is just, oh, it's succulent. Chef's kiss here. Attackers also compromised a Discord account belonging to an Arbitrum, Arbitrum developer, using it to post a phishing link to the official Arbitrum Discord server. <laughs> If they get hacked or rug pull now, they're basically performing the holy grail of all good things that happen to, to crypto projects. Or if they get sued or someone gets indicted. Then when the time for the airdrop came, the token claiming website crashed on traffic, as did the Arbitrum Block Explorer. Those who were able to claim their token paid exorbitant gas fees. Gas fees are basically transactional fees for, you know, interacting with the blockchain in pretty much any kind of way. And some wallets attempting to estimate required gas fees malfunctioned, showing estimates into billions of dollars. Finally, the airdrop was widely gamed by people, commandeering hacked vanity addresses to receive the airdrop token allocated to them, with at least $500,000 worth of tokens reportedly claimed by one attacker. <laughs> Oh dear. Other attackers scrambled to compete with one another to claim tokens allocated to compromised wallets whose private keys had been shared publicly on GitHub and elsewhere, trying to be the first to siphon the funds. Two additional exploiters siphoned a combined total of more than 1 million ARB tokens from other wallets. One sold them for 713th, aka $1.27 million. The other transferred the ARB tokens to other wallets. Oh baby. 
So that's what happened originally, and then this happens. So Bumpy start to the airdrop distributed governance tokens to Arbitrum users. The first use of these governance tokens, a governance token again being something that governs the protocol. Essentially, you know, we're all voting on this shit. And it arguably went even worse. Arbitrum submitted a proposal for DAO members to vote on various governance processes, as well as the distribution of 750 million ARB tokens to a, quote, administrative budget wallet, Tokens that were priced at around $1 billion. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of money for something that doesn't seem to work all that well. The vote, which still has a day left before completion, is currently standing at 75% against and 25% in support. However, it was discovered that Arbitrum had already begun spending those 750 million tokens, including via the movement of a substantial amount of tokens and, quote, conversion of some funds into stable coins for operational purposes. I hate when I'm running a business and I just need a quick billion dollars for operational purposes. Another Arbitrum team member subsequently published a post in which they claimed that the proposal was not really a vote, but rather a ratification of decisions that had already been made by the Arbitrum team, leading many to question what the DAO was even for in the first place, which is right. Because if you have a vote for something, let's say you get 10 people in a room and, and the vote is, you know, where we're going to go tonight. And then you all vote, oh, we want to go to to this bar. But then they turn around and go, no, but we've already booked this bar. What the fuck is the point in holding the vote? Why, <laughs> why are you even bringing it up in the first place? But in that case, you just go, oh, my friend's a dickhead. In this case, oh, the people who have just took a million dollars out of this project that we've put money into now are dickheads. Others questioned the fact that Arbitrum was receiving so much money to use however they liked, not subject to DAO approval. Yeah, it makes complete sense. Things got even messier when the Arbitrum Twitter account clarified that $40 million in ARB tokens had been allocated as a loan to a sophisticated actor in the financial market space, and the rest had been sold off for operational costs. So, you're telling me... You need $960 million in operational costs. Because you've got to put into perspective here, when somebody sells tokens, when the company sells tokens, where's the money coming from? It's coming from the public or, you know, institutional investors or something like that, VCs, whatever it's going to be, somebody buying the tokens from the, the company. So they've given someone a $40 million loan, who knows who that is, and then just bag dumped 960 mil of tokens on their audience, which is the same mechanism of how a rug pull usually works. Because a lot of teams, basically, when they hold a large sum of tokens, you usually have them locked up so they can't just, you know, mag dump essentially all of their, their bags on the audience. That's like the security mechanism of, of the team not being able to rug pull you, essentially, as soon as there gets to be hype or value around the token. So it's not even 42 mil, as that claims. It's the loan of $52 million worth of ARB to an unnamed actor and the conversion of another 30 mil to stablecoins led some to accuse the Arbitrum team of quote, selling off, cashing in far more than would likely be required for foundation costs in a brief period of time. So it does obviously just raise the question, if you're turning around and saying, you know, we were going to do it anyway, then why put up, as you can see here, a fucking vote? But don't worry, it's for good operations, the operations that need to keep us operational will take those coins. And we'll sell them, but don't worry, don't worry. We're going to put it up for a vote, but don't worry. We've already sold the coins, so don't worry. The <laughs> it is just true. It's, it's just hilarious. Like, it, this is the thing. I just read through this post, like, skimmed most of it about the, the situation. And they're saying a lot of words here that don't explain why exactly you'd put the vote up in the first place if you were already going to do this anyway. If you were just letting people know that we we've done this that it's in motion you know fuck the idea of of you know we're supposed to be voting on things that are this huge a billion dollars is is a lot of money right there's no getting around that even if this was not a billion dollars if it was any large sum of money in a system which is supposed to be about decentralized voting why would you just not announce that you're going to do it and have no vote because the vote serves no purpose so even if you disclosed somewhere previously that this was going to be done anyway you completely undo that by holding a vote. It makes it look like you wanted people to agree, and when they didn't, you're just like, 
eh, fuck it. But this shit's always hilarious to me and it never won't be hilarious because there's nowhere else in the world you can find things like this happening. Co- companies don't operate like this, which is why I will continue to cover this and laugh. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace out.